This Week at NASA. Four, three, two, one, zero. And lift off. Expedition 3637 flight engineer Karen Nyberg of NASA, Soyuz Commander Fyodor Yurchikin of the Russian Federal Space Agency, and flight engineer Luka Parmitano of the European Space Agency launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan in a Russian Soyuz spacecraft on May 29th Kazakhstan time for a six-hour journey to the International Space Station. The arrival of the trio marks the start of its five-and-a-half-month mission aboard the ISS. They joined flight engineer Chris Cassidy of NASA and Russians Pavel Vinogradov, commander of the station, and flight engineer Alexander Mazurkin. Cassidy, Vinogradov, and Mazurkin have been on the station since late March. Views from above of the storm system associated with a destructive May 20th EF-5 tornado in Oklahoma. An image from NASA's Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectroradiometer, or MODIS, instrument aboard the Aqua satellite shows the supercell thunderstorm that spawned the deadly tornado. The red line depicts the track of the mile-wide twister that passed just south of Oklahoma City. And this animation of images from NOAA's GOES-13 satellite shows the movement of the storm system across the south-central U.S. An EF-5 tornado generates winds of at least 200 miles per hour. NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden was updated on the important work being done at the agency's California centers recently. At the Dryden Flight Research Center in Edwards, the Administrator toured Sierra Nevada Corporation Space Systems' Dream Chaser spacecraft. The Dream Chaser test article will be evaluated later this year as part of NASA's commercial crew program to develop safe, reliable, and cost-effective access to and from the International Space Station and low Earth orbit. I'm personally excited about uh, having Dream Chaser here at Dryden. I can't think of a better place to be testing a vehicle like this than bringing it right out here to the Edwards Dry Lake bed. Uh, which is very historic in its own right. During a stop at Pasadena's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Bolden was briefed on new technology being developed for NASA's initiative to capture and relocate an asteroid to Earth-Moon space for study, sample collection, and return by humans. JPL continues to play a critical role in our plans to develop a mission to identify, capture, and redirect an asteroid. This mission represents an unprecedented technological challenge raising the bar for human and scientific exploration and discovery. And at Ames Research Center in Moffett Field, Bolden saw work being done with additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing, a critical part of President Obama's push for a strong American manufacturing sector, and the PhoneSat nanosatellite technology program, which builds small satellites with off-the-shelf cellular phone technology. As NASA ventures further into space, whether redirecting an asteroid or sending humans to Mars. We'll need transformative technology to reduce cargo weight and volume. In the future, perhaps astronauts will be able to print the tools or components they need while in space. On May 31st, an asteroid believed to be about 1.7 miles long named 1998 QE2 will sail safely past Earth, about 3.6 million miles away. According to astronomers, this encounter with QE2 at 4.59 p.m. Eastern Time will be the asteroid's closest approach to Earth for at least the next two centuries. There is no threat to the Earth uh, from this close approach, but it provides us a very good uh, opportunity to learn more about this object, the uh, size, shape, and uh, rotation dynamics uh, of this object. NASA's Near Earth Object Program manages and funds the search, study, and monitoring of asteroids and comets to facilitate a chief NASA priority of protecting the planet from those objects. Jack Fisher was one of four NASA astronauts to fly simulated landings of the Dream Chaser spacecraft at the Langley Research Center. Everybody, welcome in, everybody good go? All right. The three-day simulations in a mock-up cockpit gave astronauts a feel for how the Sierra Nevada Corporation's winged vehicle will handle from the moment it enters Earth's atmosphere through a runway landing. Sierra Nevada Corporation is working with NASA's commercial crew program to refine the design of the Dream Chaser for future missions to low Earth orbit. NASA's Curiosity rover has drilled into its second rock on the red planet. Curiosity drilled a 2.6-inch deep hole 
into a rock called Cumberland, located about nine feet east of John Klein, the rock Curiosity drilled into three months ago. Plans call for delivering portions of the Cumberland sample to laboratory instruments inside the rover for analysis and comparison to samples from John Klein, which indicated that long ago, conditions favorable for microbial life existed in that area of Mars. Attention start. Lift off of the Antares A1 test mission. Following its launch on the Antares test rocket in April, the Ames-built PhoneSat CubeSats successfully deployed into orbit and demonstrated that low-cost cell phone-based satellites could work in space. During the flight, signals carrying image data from the cell phone cameras were transmitted back to the ground. Volunteer amateur ham radio operators worldwide recorded and uploaded the data to the research team at Ames to form pictures of the Earth. Researchers are already building the next generation of PhoneSat for launch later this year. Goddard Space Flight Center hosted traditional media and NASA social media followers for a NASA social about the Global Precipitation Measurement Mission and other NASA programs. GPM is an international network of satellites that will measure rain and snowfall around the world and provide new insights into our planet's water cycles. Participants heard from GPM scientists about this cutting-edge science and were treated to tours of the facilities where GPM's core satellite was tested. The core satellite is scheduled to launch from Japan in 2014. I feel the liftoff. The clock has started. On May 24, 1962, Mercury astronaut Scott Carpenter launched from Cape Canaveral aboard the Aurora 7 spacecraft. The flight was the second manned orbital mission of the Mercury program following John Glenn's Friendship 7 flight three months earlier. Like Glenn, Carpenter circled the Earth three times. The five-hour mission focused on science and included the first study of liquids in weightlessness and Earth photography. A targeting mishap during re-entry took the spacecraft about 250 miles off course. However, Carpenter and Aurora 7 were safely recovered after splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories or to follow us on Facebook, Google+, and other social media, log on to www.nasa.gov.